Hey guys, it's Ted Bogart. Welcome back to the Ted Show. Happy Monday. We're kicking off Monday, February 7th, which is technically the first Monday in February. And I'm excited to have my old friend, my dear friend, Branson Bowen is on the phone. On the phone. Wow. You're on the phone. This is how my Monday's going. Branson is here. He's with Contractors, Closers and Connections. We're going to talk about an event that's coming up on the 15th, but our star, our spotlight is Annette Snedeker. She's with the Fane House, and we're going to talk about the hidden crisis. If y'all don't know about the Fane House, you're going to learn more today, and you're going to fall in love with it and its mission, just like I did a long time ago when Jeff decided this was what he wanted to do. So welcome to both of you. How are you today? Good, Thanks, good. Ted. Thanks for having us. I'm, I'm excited really glad to be here well. with both of you. I appreciate you doing it on a Monday at 11. I, all, I know this stuff all gets crazy on Mondays. Um, Annette, I'm, I always like to start with the person we don't know. So tell us a little bit about you before we went live. I said that the audience just wants to know a little bit about your journey, especially your journey to the Fane House. Sure. Well, uh, thanks for asking. So I've been with the Fane House about three years now. Um, I was a subcontractor at one point, helping them plan events. Um, now I serve as their executive director. But uh, my journey to the Fane House actually was a personal one as well. About 10 years ago, uh, my husband and I took in a 17-year-old um, and did all we could to become mom and dad and get her uh, independent. And that process for me was an incredible process. And to see someone go from, you know, being feeling like there was no hope left in their life uh, to aspiring to their own dreams and ambitions and to taking on more um, was just a really, really, really powerful thing to watch. Some, you know, it, it basically it was it's, it's transformational. Um, and so, you know, here I get to do it uh, at the Fane House again and again and again um, with 18 to 23 year olds. So beautiful. I love that you almost got choked up. You almost got me choked up on a Monday morning. <laughs> Um, thank you for sharing that. And thank you for what you do. And we're going to learn more about that. Branson, tell them a little bit about you and a little bit about what you do. Yeah. So Ted, I appreciate you having us. Um, you know, just a little bit about me. Originally I'm from Baton Rouge, Louisiana, and I run a nonprofit here in Orlando called Contractors, Closers and Connections Orlando. Um, it encompasses the commercial real estate and construction professionals of Orlando, um, and we kind of focus on philanthropic initiatives um, of the Orlando community and local charities. So through that, we thought that it would be a great idea um, to benefit the Fane House at one of our events. Um, I've known Jeff and Brittany for a while and, and got to meet Annette and just the great things that the Fane House are doing. Um, so we actually have an event coming up next week at the Sky Lounge at the Amway Center, where the Fane House will be the beneficiary for the actual event and the event proceeds. So we just wanted to get the Fane House on and, and kind of help support them and their mission as they continue doing the great things that they're doing. So wonderful. And we'll post the link to the event. You can you can buy tickets still to the event on the 15th. Yep. Yep. Uh, we'll post that in the comments uh, after the show. All right, Annette. So tell us about the Fane House. You alluded to a little bit, uh, but I think for people who are tuning in for the first time, um, they might not know. They might know about Jeff, but they might not know about the Fane House. So give us some background and what the Fane House actually does in our community. Absolutely. So the Fane House was started a little over a decade ago by Jeff Fane, Jeff Sharon, and the Children's Home Society. Uh, the house ran uh, is, is a 7,000 square foot facility out in kind of the Pine Hills, Apopka area. Um, and it consists of 10 bedrooms and an office wing and a common kitchen and a place where kind of collaborative thinking and learning can take place. And the Fane House exists to empower and equip 18 to 23 year olds who are on a journey towards independence. So we might end up with a, a, you know, a 20 year old who's been couch surfing for a year or so um, and just can't quite, you know, get stable enough to uh, be able to pay all the necessary bills and to move on to that place in their life where they could put a down payment on an apartment. 
um, and live with, you know, health and wellness and wholeness. And so, uh, you know, someone might come here out of the foster care system. Maybe they turn 18 and they don't have anywhere to go um, because their background was real challenging, um, maybe even abusive. And so they, they, they run out of places to go and they, they come to the Thane House and we are um, equipped with some really caring, dynamic staff and um, amazing uh, mentors from, from the community who work with our, our residents and work at getting them educational and employment opportunities. We teach about finances, we teach about health, nutrition, fitness, exercise. Um, and most of all, we really become a place where they can heal, um, have the space and the opportunity to process their own life um, and to gain some tools, emotional tools, uh, in order to go back out into the world when they graduate and to maintain their own independence and health. That's beautiful. And I, I want to... I... I want to talk about the hidden crisis in a minute, but I want to bring up something you mentioned. I think a lot of people don't realize that when kids age out in foster care uh, at 18, you're basically given whatever you have in your little knapsack and told to get out of Dodge because you're not part of the system anymore. And if you're a child that's been in foster care for any amount of time, you really don't have any place to go, um, especially if you've been bounced around, you don't have the stability. A lot of times you don't have the coping skills, the resiliency. It's it's just such a challenge. And we just turn them out because that's how the system works. So at 18, you're on your own and you could have been in foster care since you were five or younger. It's just it is a big challenge. So to be able to provide an alternative or a hope for them, I think, is really critical. So kudos to you all for what you yeah. do. It's It's amazing. All right. Tell me what the hidden crisis is. So we've, we've danced around it, right? We've, we've mentioned it a little bit, but the hidden crisis is the fact that there are 600, probably over 600 homeless young adults here in the Tri-County area on a daily basis. Often we don't know young adults are homeless or our definition of homeless isn't quite specific enough where we, we don't, we don't kind of put two and two together. Like we know our friend is housing a young adult or um, Aunt Susie has their niece or nephew living with them. Person is technically homeless. You know, if you, if you don't have somewhere to go, um, but you're living with a neighbor, a friend, an aunt, um, you're in a homeless situation. And so that can be all around us without us even knowing it. And I often say to people that the cashier checking you out at Publix could be homeless and living in their car, but they're still making it to work. And what happens is eventually the car runs out of gas or the couch wears thin. And then that's when the real crisis comes about because they don't have a place to go at night anymore. So they end up under a bridge, in a park, on a bench. Um, those places that, um, that we tend to see some of the older homeless people. So what the Fane House is trying to do is intercede in that at a younger age. So then they're not on the street, you know, asking for money and food when they're when they're 30, 50 or, or 60. I think a lot of times with the um, I have a background in this, just that's why okay. I can talk a little bit. I have a master's degree in healthcare administration with a focus in nonprofits. So I'm familiar with the crisis. It's been a crisis for a very long time. Uh, and what happens is it's not just about the kids becoming homeless. Uh, those kids are also at a higher risk for overdose, trafficking, um, uh, prostituting, prostitution. Uh, there's just so much that because when you're on the streets, you'll you learn to survive. And the survival skill out there is a lot different uh, than when you're in a safe place. It's not a safe place uh, out there under the ramp and under the bridge. It is a dangerous place. And if you're a young kid, uh, and there are some very young kids out there, guys, I yes. want to let you know that are homeless um, yeah. and they are doing everything they can to survive. And that can turn into just such a tragic uh, 
life experience for them. Ted, that's really true. Uh, there, you know, there are 11 year olds out there who we, we, we don't see them. So one of the reasons why it's hidden is because a teenager or young adult still has pride. They have ego Mm -hmm. and they, they don't want people to know they're homeless. Um, but by the time the, the brain trauma and the damage occurs years later, you don't have any pride left about, you know, being homeless, not, not every time, but often. And so it's, it, it doesn't stay as hidden. Um, you know, one of the challenges uh, is, 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 is this embarrassing to show up to, to someplace and say, I don't have anywhere to go. Um, so, so we want young adults coming here to know that we're here to love up on them um, and help them and to launch them, not, not to keep them in the same place. And a lot of that, I love that. And I think a lot of them um, trust issues, right? So they're, they've probably been bounced around for a long time. Now they're out on the street. Um, and it's, it's not only hard to admit because of the ego, but then they don't necessarily trust the system. And in some cases, we haven't given them the best reason to trust the system. And so it is uh, such a blessing that the Fane House is able to mitigate, teach, learn. I love that word, launch launch them that is so critical because it is life-changing you all and i don't think you know just in our own backyard we don't like to talk about it because of the mouse and everything else that's here but we really do have a crisis here in central florida and it is just getting worse and so uh programs like the fane house just come in and it's a saving grace it's it's just amazing yeah one one of the things i often um you know because one of the examples I give is, you know, you're riding around a car with someone and, and you see someone on the street asking for money and, and the kind of pull yourself up by your own bootstraps response is go get a job. Well, when you think about what it really takes to go get a job, you have to have a laptop to apply. You better have a printer if you're going to, you know, mail in your resume. You better have a phone so they can call you on. You better have clothes that you can wear the interview. It's very complicated actually getting a job. Um, and being able to sustain that job to continually show up to work on time, dress correctly, um, with high hygiene, right. Clean. Um, so it, it, it's not just about, Hey, go get a job. It's about, um, offering the, the foundation necessary in order to go and get that a job and also to feel like you deserve it and that you're going to stick to it. And, And think about, think about this. I think, one of the things I had Michael on here uh, from iDignity, and I think one of the things people don't realize is that um, you also need an address where they're going to send a check. You need a lot of things to open a bank account. So it's not just, oh, well, I can direct deposit. Not necessarily. If you don't have a, an address and you haven't had a driver's license in a while, it is a very complicated process. Yes. that somebody has to go through that we take we take for granted that it should be easy to apply because like you said we have our laptops we have our address we have all of those things that are basic mm-hmm. uh necessities for applying for a job and maintaining a job so i i think all of these points are so important because it's out there and that's why i want everybody to know more about what the fane house does and i was so excited when branson came to me and said, hey, we're doing it with the Fane House. We're doing it for and with the Fane House on the 15th. Yeah. Thank you, um, Branson. All right. So <laughs> tell us the best way, both of you, Annette first, tell us the best way people can learn more, find out more, uh, get involved, donate, whatever it is that you need at the Fane House. What's the best way for them to reach out to you? Thanks for asking. We have a website, supportfanehouse.org. Um, we're also on Facebook. LinkedIn and Instagram. Um, our, our phone numbers and our emails are, are on the, especially on the, the website and Facebook. And so, you know, I'm, I'm everyone knows I'm always up for a cup of coffee uh, to sit and chat if someone wants to get involved further. I know Branson and I have had coffee numerous times. Um, so, you know, and I'm always up for a conversation. And we also have some, some schools who have gotten involved and they've gotten their kids uh, here, you know, into our facility to learn about, you know, uh, systemic poverty and trauma and that kind of thing. Um, it's important to teach that at a young age too. So we're here and available. Fantastic. Happy to reach out. That, that website scrolling across the bottom uh, you. of your screen. Hey, Branson, tell them again uh, how they can reach you and maybe learn more about contractors, closers, and connections. Yeah, so the best way, um, I would say probably through LinkedIn. 
Um, I'm fairly active on LinkedIn. So if there's anybody that wants to learn more or try to get involved, um, just reach out. And then we actually do have our event coming up. So if you're in the real estate or construction industry, feel free to reach out. I'll send over the ticket information. We can get you connected to Annette and the Fain House and see what goes from there. Fantastic. All right. I love and appreciate everything that you guys do in the community. Thank you for coming on the show. Y'all get involved. Support Fainhouse.org. You can reach out to me, Branson, or Annette. I've tagged them all. God knows, ad nauseum, I'm sure you guys have got tired of seeing all the tags. Uh, but that's the way we get people to check out uh, your social media and find out more about you. So you guys always ask me uh, how you can get involved. Here's an amazing organization, a local organization that does so much good in our community. And so I would love for you to go to supportfainhouse.org, reach out to me, Branson, or Annette. Thank you both for being on the show and for everything that you thank do. You, thank, thank you, Branson. Thank you, thank you, thank, thank you. you. All right, I hope you all have a wonderful week.